Hello, my name is Garnet Dupuy, and I am the inventor of the Neurovisor and the brand new Neuroathletic Collection. Neuroathletic Collection. I'm very proud to have this chance to introduce something that I hope is going to be helpful and interesting. For me, uh, I've had the, I, th I think, the privilege to work throughout my career in integrative healthcare with a good number of athletes in a broad range of interests and capacities. Uh, I've had the chance to work with gold medalists. We've had the Paris Olympics recently. Uh, World-class top professionals, championship university teams, major league professional sports teams, uh, NFL, NBA, and um, I think quite significantly the warrior athletes in the Marine Corps. Uh, these are remarkable people. It's not a game that they play. Uh, it's actually running for their life and they have to do it with combat boots, 80 pound pack on their back and an eight pound rifle in their arms. So the concept of having neuroathletics for the neurovisor to me is important. I had the chance to start working in relation to neuroathletics or athletics as a whole back in the early 1980s, yeah. And um, at that time, the textbooks were called work physiology. It wasn't even called sports medicine at the time. And this evolution that has taken place over the last 40, 45 years has been remarkable. I had the chance, I'm just proud to say, uh, the 1984 uh, Olympics in LA, I had already started uh, working and developing a department in the International Sports Medicine Institute at the time. And uh, uh, 84 was the first time that uh, massage therapy was given to the athletes as a service. So I said, okay, and organized an entire ballroom of massage therapists and body workers for all of the pre-Olympic athletes. We did it for free. We had 40 tables going at the same time. And from then until now, I've seen the neuroscience progress, athletics progress, training concepts progress, and here we are at this stage now. So what is neuroathletics? Neuroathletics, I would say pretty honestly, is a mind-body concept. Uh, the idea that we're working with a brain and our brain is physical. It's as physical as my heart. It's as physical as your spine. It's as physical as our hamstring muscles. And we have techniques and we have technology that has integrated into training the physicality. And now we also have to include the physicality of the brain. We can train the brain. The neurovisor is a light sound brain stimulation device and we've developed a series of brain exercises, brain trainings using light and sound. And they stretch across the whole spectrum of training and conditioning, pre-performance, post-performance, the really core elements of creating a positive athletic experience and performance. These applications go for the very simple person wanting to use exercise and integrate activity into the more serious person wanting to create higher levels of fitness and activity and skill all the way up into, as I'd said, the, the highest levels, really. We know that once a person has developed a significant degree of fitness and skill, the wild card is the head game, the headspace, the psychology. What you'll see in the neuroathletics collection is a balanced or harmonious relationship of brain stimulation processes. Some of them are more physiological, some of them are more psychological. And anybody knows that's tried is having your head in the right place is absolutely necessary even when your body is ready you have to have your head ready as well anxiety focus the ability to have attention without tension the ability to turn it on and turn it off i'll say it this way a brain that can change when change is required 
is not only a healthy brain, it's a high performance brain. We have in the Neurovisor this collection, Neuroathletics, even processes, very quick five minute processes that we use to break habits, uh, kind of unsticking a stuck brain. And there are so many times when the willingness is there, there's just something that is not willing to shift and move. And we focus on these very quick state shifts. Being able to state shift at a certain moment is critical. And guess what? If you practice these state shifts over time involving neuroplasticity, what you'll see is the temporary state shift can begin to evolve into a long-term trait shaping. Short state shift becoming long-term trait shaping. This is at a neurological level, it's at a central nervous system level, it's at a brain level, and having that in your mm, go-to is critical. Also, I have to say that you know this, I'm sure, that in the evolution of training, the idea of training hard has grown into training smart. Hard is important. It takes effort, but it has to be intelligent. You know, and the evolution, you know, I, uh, I was raised a Canadian farm boy, and uh, my first, some of my first, well, my first jobs were on the farm, obviously, but my first outside jobs, because I was strong as a bull, you know, taking care of animals, throwing hay, and all these things. I just grew up strong, as the men in my family were. And there was a new gym, not even a gym, I don't know, it was called Vic Tannies, kind of the Jack LaLanne of Canada. And I went there to get a job, and it was a very small place in a new strip mall, and it was just free, free weights, barbells, and <laughs> a couple of really um, interesting uh, characters that worked there. So I didn't know anything. All I knew, I was strong, and I went in there and began to learn the early principles. I look in my memory back at that time and to go to almost any gym now, which is remarkable. The technology is so evolved. There are machines for everything and there are trainers that know so much. And going back, and I have to admit that would have been, oh my God, I, uh, 1968. <laughs> uh, comparing that to now uh, is, um, it's exciting to me. And bringing the Neurovisor Neuroathletic Collection into this newly evolved neuroscientific train hard but train smart. You've got your hard days, your easy days, your off days. This idea of a neurological basis that has a direct relationship to the psychological basis is what makes things better now. We're breaking world records all the time in every category. Why? Because of advanced training physiology. Sports medicine is the thing that really is benefiting all of healthcare using the athletic model as a testing ground. So even people that are not in the NFL or they're not gonna be appearing in some Olympics or anything, still the benefit is direct to every person wanting to even exercise without even calling it athletics. This is the point that this top-down process is moving into a uh, common life. You know, when you, I, I love, I'm in airports a lot. One of the things I do as a kind of a habit, I suppose, is I like to look at people's shoes. What kind of shoes are you wearing? And all walks of life, literally, are there moving by and 80% are wearing athletic shoes. So the concept of fitness, of exercise, now we need to move it up from what we'll call the body and also include the brain. It's crazy that we would separate the brain from the body because it's inseparable. But right now, what are we doing? What are you doing to bring high level athletic performance into a brain level? And the neuroathletics collection is meant to do that. So have a 
have, have an opportunity because this is where we are right now. There's an opportunity to expand what we know about fitness, exercise, athletics to include the brain. I also have to say, although it's not technically in the NeuroAthletics collection, there is another collection in the NeuroVisor app called Better Sleep. I actually had all the sleep elements moved into the NeuroAthletics, but it was too cumbersome. It was just too much. So my encouragement is, although NeuroAthletics is new and exciting, highly functional, it's a kind of brother-sister relationship with better sleep. We know without restorative sleep, the body's capacity to perform degrades. So understand, train hard, train smart, hard day, easy day, off day. The off is also, can you relax? This is part of the psychological element. Different kinds of relaxation. There's the relaxation you need to have right before activity, right before a hard training, right before performance. Then there's the relaxation that you have to have when it's finished. Time to turn it off. Your brain needs to be able to turn it on and turn it off according to need, according to demand. And the big turn off is, guess what? It's time to go to sleep. Sleep is essential for any person, obviously, but especially essential for persons moving and pushing their body because proteins rebuild at night. Restora restoration, restoration takes place at night. Deep sleep. These days, there are tons of sleep trackers you know, on your finger or wrist or beside your bed. That's not the issue. The issue is how to induce sleep. In the better sleep, there are basically three basically three or four categories of sessions. Start your day, that shifts the circadian cycle. It's called circadian shift forward, which is kind of odd. It means you go to sleep earlier at night if you have the light in the morning. We have sessions. Then you've got disbanding, getting rid of the stress that builds up during the day. Part of the reason it's tough to sleep at night is because stress, sympathetic charge, builds up during the day. And you have to, first of all, recognize it, learn how to let it go. Dissipate the stress throughout the day periodically. We have sessions for that. Then we have slide down the curve for early evening. It's the time to begin to let go, prepare. And then we have actually sleep-inducing sessions that are, I hesitate to say, but a little bit like a light sound sleeping pill, but no drugs involved. So please consider Better Sleep to be the companion collection to the new NeuroAthletic collection. I wish you well. Stay in touch. Give us some feedback. Thank you very much.